Gigabyte's X299 motherboard lineup features a range of options with support for Intel's Core X series CPUs. Boards like the Aorus X299 Gaming 7 are packed with useful features and support Optane memory, Thunderbolt 3, and USB 3.1 Gen 2. Click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is Arctic Panther build log number four. And if everything goes according to plan, this is gonna be the final build log in this series. Of course, I might do more with this system down the line and I'm gonna do another follow-up video with some actual testing and performance and temperature numbers. But for today, I just have a short list, but an important list of final things to take care of with this build before I can do the final fill and give you guys hopefully some Sweet, sweet B-roll porn while I actually fill up this unit with this uh, Primo Chill View opaque fluid with the magic inside that makes it look all swooshy and gives it some fancy texture. Beyond filling, of course, though, I have a couple other major important things to take care of. One, of course, is gonna be the cable training, which I've done a tad bit of right now with some twist ties. I don't have any proper cable combs, uh, so I'm gonna be using some at-home ghetto methods. I have some twist ties on there right now with just the initial shape that they should be in. I might actually do some fishing line method on that as well, uh, but we'll see how things go because I'm limited on space. Finally, one major problem is that as I filled up my reservoir, I realized that the top of it, which I'm not able to tighten down all the way and still have my outlets pointing back, which is where they need to be to get my fill port lined up, uh, it's leaking a little bit. So for that, I'm just gonna add some PTFE tape and hopefully that will seal the leak. Let's get started. I actually had quite a few people ask me how I'm planning to drain this with the drain here at the bottom middle of the case. Well, since I know I'm gonna have this system over in the corner, my plan the entire time has been to sort of position it right here on the edge of the desk so that I can just drain it straight down. So I got a bucket in there. My dilemma right now is that uh, this is the same fill drain port on the bottom as the fill drain port on the top. I discovered in the pre previous video that that is actually not G1 quarter. That's a much wider gap right there. I believe that it might be like a half inch or something like that. Not entirely sure, but I am going to use an old piece of tubing. I'm just gonna take the cap off and kind of fit it on, under there so it can drain out and then uh, get this water out of here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty ghetto, but I barely got it threaded on there. So it's there and now Top open to allow air in. I should be able to just turn the knob and we should just should get a drain. And we have definite success for the main reservoir over here. Beyond that, getting lots of spray, but we're actually getting a siphon effect for the rest of the loop here. And it's even pulling it was pulling some water up and through the radiator and out through the rest of the loop. So we're not getting a full drain. I wasn't expecting that, but we did get most of the main chamber out of there. It's mainly a few areas of the loop that have some water stuck in them that doesn't want to come out. Our uh, flow indicator here, of course, being a major issue as well as the kind of bump behind that radiator up here. Got most of the liquid out of the graphics cards as far as I can tell. But yeah, um, introducing an air inlet up in this upper uh, length here is really what uh, would probably solve most of this, but it also require a pretty major redesign of the, the loop. So for now, we will do our best to get um, as much of it out of there as we can. So our, our flow indicator here is, is where we have most of the fluid. It's really not that much. It's a very small knot that's trapped right there. But that's probably where I'm, I could get it out of there, but I really, should, should move on at this point, and I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal.
I'm attempting to use the fishing line. I'm gonna point out that there are proper ways of doing this and I have no idea what I'm doing right now. This needle might actually work for me. It's a, it's a leather working needle, so the tip is pretty blunt, so I shouldn't have to worry about poking through the wires or anything. I just needed a, a better way to actually manipulate my fishing line here and possibly give myself a shot at threading these cables. Uh, so I have given up. I made a brief attempt at the cable threading thing. I might attack that again with a power supply that I have full access to the cables to. But since these cables are already halfway installed, go to the old school get-out method um, of cable training, which is basically to use twist ties because they are flexible and somewhat rigid because there's a wire inside. You can wrap them around, kind of position the cables where you want them to be. And all I'm really caring about is the part of the cable that's poking out there in the front that's visible. So that's all I'm training up right here. Everything else as far as excess cable, stuff that's not as long as it should be, dummy wires is gonna be pushed back here. And hopefully, I can leave these twist ties on for a few days, maybe a week. We'll see how long. Pull them off and the cable should stay where they, where I told them to be. You, you stay. Stay. This is another issue of me attempting to overcome some of the uh, aesthetic fails of the original Arctic Panther builds. And um, this group of, of cables here was always a challenge for me. They were always, uh, made, always made it really tough to get the uh, reverse side panel on and everything. So I don't, I don't think I can make this functional, but I'm hoping I can do a little bit more of uh, cinching down and stuff to at least be able to put that side panel on without too much trouble. Uh, can't forget the LED strip. I have a single RGB strip here. I'm gonna go, it's gonna kind of curve uh, up the edge here and I've already brought the, uh, showed that in the last video, how I brought the lead for it over here. I'm just gonna go around the bottom. I'm uh, gonna affix it with some glue gun glue with my Super Ghetto glue gun. Uh, this does have some adhesive on the bottom, but the adhesive, the 3M adhesive that comes on LED strips like this is notoriously unreliable, so we're going to switch that out. Let's make sure I'm plugging this end in correctly. Alright, I'm going to go without the glue gun then. Because honestly, I might need to, I might want to reposition this a little bit once uh, we light it up and see how it looks. There's also a chance that I might add an extension to this LED and bring it up over here as well. Right now, that is connected to the RGB uh, logo here on the SLI bridge, and then that strip across the bottom. I'm pretty sure I could add the top one as well, because I'm out of RGB headers on the motherboard. Now we're going to fill it again. Main main issue for me right now is making sure there's nothing coming out around the edge of this, which we appear to be okay with. Thank God for that PETG tape. All right guys, moving on to a very important moment, uh, which is actually powering on the system with the loop with its own power supply. I've been running the uh, pump off of an external power supply up to now, just to make sure if there's a leak, we don't lose any components in there. So yeah, I got the cap on with the PETG wrap on there. It does appear to be holding water, no leaks coming there. Uh, so let's, let's go. Oh wait. Uh, 
Oh look, we have standby power. So SLI bridge and the RGB strip down here are plugged in the same, but the colors aren't the same. The, uh, the uh, SLI bridge here and the RGB strip aren't syncing up. That means two of them are probably swapped. Uh, Asus or, actually I think this comes with cable mod uh, LED strips. It's a little adapter and this will allow me to theoretically switch over. All right, so it's flip flop the G and the R or the R and the B or whatever was uh, flipped. Now we're getting the same color here as we are on the RGB strip down at the bottom. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Rest of the RGB LEDs are gonna be controlled by the software and I need to get that installed and up and running, of course. Uh, but for now, I think we're to the point where we can actually do the fill with this stuff from Primo Chill, the view coolant. And uh, actually pretty excited to get this installed and see how it all looks. That's really cool. So guys, my fluid has turned blue. That's right, view is now blue, and I have to point out here that I'm using some parts that were used in the previous Arctic Panther build, and that this stuff that Primo Chill sent me is not ready for public con consumption yet. This is not uh, the stuff that they're gonna be selling when it's finally done. And I imagine white might be a little bit tougher to handle than maybe some of the other pastel colors that they might go with. However, chemicals being difficult to handle when you're dealing with a loop uh, inside a, C a computer with different temperatures and all that. Uh, I'm not at all surprised that there was some color shift, although it did happen fairly quickly overnight. We have now a sort of nice ice blue color in there, although if you can tell compared to the original fluid, which is still fairly white since I do have some leftovers. But I do think it is about time to call it quits for Arctic Panther build log number four. And although there are some aesthetic quibbles still left to be worked out, the actual build is complete and functionally everything is working, even if uh, aesthetically it's not all quite exactly where I want it to be. I have started to remove some of the ties that I used for the cable training over here, and they're mostly staying where they should. I'll probably remove some more of those after a few more days have gone by, and I do some finishing touches, shifting stuff into place. There's a couple other things I might still do, but I think for now, I'm gonna leave you guys with the montage of the system as is, because uh, since I do have RGB LEDs in there, um, and I have gotten the operating system installed and uh, the Asus Aura software up and running. I've also done at least some BIOS adjustments for the fang speed and that kind of thing. Uh, everything's working really good, so, so that's good. Uh, I might figure out something to do with the fluid at a later date. If you guys have any uh, suggestions for me, leave those in the comments. As you can tell, it just got nice and quiet since the fans and stuff uh, kicked into gear. And I am getting some nice texture out of that view fluid, so I will say that. Even running overnight, it's still staying nice and, and, and textury and, and soapy or whatever you want to call it in there. So that's cool. It is getting the job done when it comes to the looks department. Just wish it was all white because then I would have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the lights in here. The lights are looking pretty good when I have like blue and, and pink in. But I'm talking too much already. So guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy it too. And subscribe to my channel because I got more stuff coming on this, although the build part is complete for now. Here is a montage of the final Arctic Panther. Probably.